You are listening to the Ebony Covering Black America Podcast Network, presented by Walmart. This is Holly Cotton, and thanks for tuning into my show, Beyond the Fit, on Ebony Covering Black America Podcast Network. I wanted to do a show with the holiday season upon us about gaining weight, losing weight, making smart choices, kind of figuring out some topics that relate to this holiday season. And not only that, with the actual weight gain, weight loss, but I also know that after holiday season starts resolution season. And people that are listening to this show may be in that transitional phase. Like they're saying, okay, this holiday season, I am going to limit what I'm eating. I need to figure out some healthy choices. I need to get my life right. And I need to go into the new year with a plan, a plan to be the healthiest version of myself. So today our show is going to focus on a little bit of all of that information. I have another episode that will come out after this. I couldn't fit all the segments into this one episode because There was so much good information. We have a great guest coming up that's actually going to talk about fitness, being a career person, us being this midlife population and how to balance being a nurturer as well as making ourselves a priority. So lots and lots of good topics in the next couple of shows for anyone that is seeking to do that, that's seeking to change the lifestyle, maintain a lifestyle. Maybe you don't even know that you want to make a change, but now listening to the show, you're like, hmm, you know what? Maybe I need to implement some of these things into my life. Don't wait until the beginning of the year to start making all of these plans and these resolutions about your health. You can start any day that you want. We're going to deal with the topics of stress, abdominal fat, all of those things. Again, every single show I talk about how we are in this together. This is a journey that I'm on with you as well. I'm sharing my perspective from being a nurse, from being a professional, all of those titles that I have, and I'm trying to share that so that we all have someone to lean on. We can all use this information with each other to become the healthiest versions of ourselves. So the first topic that we're actually going to talk about is going to be nutrition and not just regular nutrition, what to eat, what not to eat, but the importance of balance in your diet, the importance of making sure that you are making healthy choices, a lifestyle, which we will constantly talk about. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to eat right today and tomorrow and not eat right again for the rest of the week. I'm going to talk a little bit in the next segment about balance with nutrition. And the thing with balance is that you need to have what works for your body type. Stay away from fad diets. Fad diets work because you are monitoring what you're putting in your body. It's very easy to lose weight and to think that the diet is what is giving you the results, but it's more of you're actually counting calories. You're staying away from carbs or certain certain bad foods. Whatever it is, you're making a conscious decision of what you're going to put in and out your body. That is why they call it a fad, because short term, it's going to help you lose weight. It's going to help you do whatever it is that you're trying to do. But long term, you have to actually change your lifestyle. You have to change your eating habits if you want to maintain the weight loss or however your body looks or whatever. You have to continue. You can't just stop. So that means that you need to figure out what works for you. What works for your body type? Is everything going to be set up, set in stone? Are you going to eat the same things every single day? Or are you going to fluctuate? Where's your protein coming in? That's where 
these fitness apps actually can be what you need. You need to have a fitness app so that you can count your calories. You can count, they call them macro nutrients. And you can do a web search to get some more information about that. Look it up. It's a very good way. A lot of athletes do do that, especially people that are competing, doing fitness things. Download some type of fitness app download a macro counting app. That way you can log your food. So you get the same result from the fad diet because now you are monitoring every single thing that you put in your mouth. Now you're looking at everything that you go to eat and you look at the nutritional value of it. You're going to be able to see everything and you can do this long-term because you're changing the way you think about food. And like I said, I do the same thing. I struggle as well. You know, I drive by Popeye's and smell the the hot chicken frying and I want to go and get a three-piece special or whatever the Tuesday special is. You guys know what Tuesday special is. I want to do the same thing. I'm not exempt. I, I too have to do the balance that works for me. And with that balance comes things like cheat meals and... The thing that I tell people about a cheat meal is do not rob yourself and do not reward your hard work with something unhealthy. If you go work out and then you say, whew, okay, I worked out for an hour and I feel great. Now I can have a slice of cheesecake. You basically have just taken away all that you have done. And it is a decision that you need to make every single day. Yes, I do have a cheat meal. I have a cheat meal usually on Fridays. I save it so that I can actually have family time and I can go and it's a socialization thing. And I know that I'm going to have my one cheat meal for the week. It's going to be a good one too. But the rest of the time during the week, I make sure that I'm eating properly. I make sure I'm doing my meal preparation, all all of those things. So that way, whenever I do eat on Friday, it's not a reward for me working out all week. It's just balance of my lifestyle because that makes me feel okay. Now I had this little sample of it. I can go back and do the things that I need to do on tomorrow. Again, stay consistent. I cannot stress how important consistency is to your success. You have to wake up every day and choose you. And that's not just with fitness and health and eating right. That's in life. Every day, you have to wake up and make yourself a priority because the day that you stop choosing you is one, a very sad day. And two, it is the day that all your dreams are just going to disappear. Now you have to start over again. Now you have to figure out where you left off and start over. All the progress that you had goes down the drain. Fitness is a prime example of this because you lose weight, you have momentum, you're working out, you're doing all these great things, and then you stop, gain all the weight back, and now you're back at day one all over again. Consistency is a key to your overall success. Choose you every day. And again, I come from a place of we're in this together. I never want to come off where I'm like, huh, I'm Miss Fitness person and I'm Strong Squad and I can do all of this stuff and you guys need to be like me. No, I would never. That's the whole reason why I love to share my story and my struggles because I can relate and I am trying to be the best version of myself every day as well, just like you. When I see someone eating a big cheesy stuffed crust pizza, it's hard for me to say no thank you and go eat something healthy. But again, I know what my goal is. I want you to think about what your goal is. I want you to think about why you're listening, what it is that you want to do, how you want to do it. And I want you to know that guess what? You're the only person that's responsible and the only person that can blame 
for not being successful. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. We're back with Beyond the Fit. Once you're honest with yourself, once you come up with a plan for yourself, you're going to make sure that you stick to the plan. I believe in you. I know that you can. Whatever your reason is for wanting to do all of this, to change, to be fit, to be healthy, remember that. And don't forget it. Don't keep stopping. Don't have to keep starting over. Just continue. If you have a bad day, guess what? Start the next day. Start that evening. You had too many whatever at work today or you just didn't feel like cooking and you ate this. Okay, so tomorrow, continue what it is that's our goal right now because the last thing you want to do is get to where it snowballs and you're not able to continue and you've lost all all the progress that you worked your butt off for. Control what you eat, be honest with yourself, and make sure that you're holding yourself accountable in some kind of way. Figure out what you need to do so that you are accountable for your action. I can give you 5,000 workouts. I can give you all the information in the world. That's one hour of your day, maybe an hour and a half if you do extra cardio or whatever. An hour and a half of your day, You can be completely motivated, completely focused, give it 110%, whoop butt, walk out of there like a beast. But guess what? You're responsible for yourself for the other 23 hours or 22 and a half hours of the day. Only you can control what's going in your body, what you're consuming, and you are the one that decides how important it is for you to be overall healthy. All of these great things, all of this information about nutrition, you have some information about how to start if you're just looking to start. You have some information about how to have a plan, how to have checkpoints, all of these things. This is our life check for this whole little part that we've been talking about. Make sure that you're implementing these things and don't forget that you deserve to be the best version of yourself. You deserve to be a priority and stop letting life and everything else come into place and stop you from getting what you deserve. I am so excited about our guest that we have today. Earlier, I was talking about abdominal fat and stress and fitness, and then also how all of this is great information for you guys going into the holiday and resolution season. So I have none other than Houston's own Hot Doc and Heels, who is the owner and founder of Soul Aesthetic, Dr. Vanessa Barrow. And not only is she known for being the hot doctor of Houston and Heels, but she is actually actually pioneering regenerative and aesthetic medicine of foot and ankle. I really, really love Dr. Barrow because she not only is fit and practices what she preaches, but she has a platform where she focuses on being fit and having a functional lifestyle as well. She's a former athlete, an avid runner, so you know that she's real. And you know that when you see her, she's going to know how to treat you, how to fix whatever the issue is that you have so that you can go back to your fittest lifestyle and everything else. Dr. Barrow, welcome to the show. What I'd like you to do is introduce yourself to all of our listeners and tell them how you got into fitness, especially like you said, coming from being a former athlete. Hey guys, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me, Holly. This is amazing. Let me just say that what you're doing is amazing. Just really representing the community, representing women, representing the African-American community, showing us that we can be fit, we can be healthy, we can live that lifestyle. So, you know, thank you for taking the reins on that. For me, you know, I've, I've always been in fitness. You know, I've always been an athlete. Uh, I went to University of Michigan in college. I was a 
a collegiate cheerleader. And if you've ever seen the, the, the cheerleading competitions, you know, it's more than stomping and clapping. So, <laughs> you know, it's very physical. I'm, I'm a former gymnast. So definitely being an athlete is, is part of my history, but that remained with me as I continued on, you know, past college. I also, my degree is actually, my bachelor's is in actual uh, athletic training. So I have a, a strong background in sports medicine. So I've been on the field. I've been, you know, I used to be an uh, athletic trainer for semi-professional football in Houston and for some of the uh, high school, uh, Texas high school football teams. And you already know Friday Night Lights ain't no joke. So <laughs> so the sports medicine is there. That's one of the reasons I specialize in foot and ankle because there's a lot of foot and ankle injuries uh, in sports. Um, so that's why I gravitated towards that. But uh, I continued my fitness journey as a personal trainer as well. I used to do personal training. So it's it's all in my blood. I love fitness. Um, uh, currently, you know, I, I pretty much work out six days a week and run on the seventh. That's what I do. Love lifting weights. I love running. Running is therapeutic for me. You know, that's part of my self care. So, you know, and as a healthcare provider, I wanted to be able to be that relatable person to patients. A lot of times patients don't see themselves in the doctors that they seek out. So I have a lot of people coming to me saying, you're a runner. I know you're a runner. I've seen you on social media. So I know that you're going to treat me the same way you would treat yourself. You're not going to just tell me, oh, hang up your running shoes for two months. You know, you're going to find a more functional way for me to get back. I want it to, and, and for patients who want to get to a new fitness journey, they see somebody who's fit and they say, I want to be motivated by this doctor. I want her to help me get to where she is. That has always been a foundation for me in practicing medicine for my patient. Right. Which is the focus of practice what you preach. That's why I love everything that Dr. Barrow does because she not only is an example to women showing what it's like to be a career person, but the fact that she also can maintain her own health. And I know that I've talked numerous times on our show about making yourself a priority and how important that is. And us as women, as mothers, or as nurturers, or whatever it is, wives, whatever whatever it is that you have in life where you are feeling you have this nurturing role, a lot of times we put ourself on the back burner because we have all these other roles, especially career wise, because we are having this new founded generation of all of these career women, entrepreneurs, business owners like you, professional doctors and things like that. I know a lot of our listeners are listening in that are career women. They may be on their way to work <laughs> as they're listening <laughs> to us talking right now. And they're like, okay, you know what? They might be dropping some gems today. Let me listen in. I I would like you to kind of give a little background into how being a career woman and being fit, like how do you make yourself a priority? And, you know, what are you doing every day to make yourself a priority? We talked about lifestyle. You could maybe just give an insight into, okay, this is what I do. This is how I feel about being a priority. And this is what how I juggle being a career person and still staying in shape. I tell everybody that anything can become a habit. You, you commit to something enough and you do it enough times, then you start to miss it when you don't do it. You know, starting is, is the hardest part. Hands down, it is. And I totally get that. For some people, I tell them, you know, if you've got you know, someone that can hold you accountable. You've got a partner. It doesn't mean to go with that to the gym, but somebody is, you know, kicking your butt and say, hey, did you go today? Did you drive by? You've got to be able to find some way to, to kind of push yourself or someone to push, you know, there has to be some reason. If it's going to be a reason of health, you've got to get off some meds. If it's going to be a reason you want to be a better role model for your children or your partner, or something, you know, there's got to be some type of reason that you're thinking of every day. And it doesn't have to be for somebody else. It could be for yourself. I do this for me. <laughs> you know, I mean, sure, there, there's the benefits, you know, are, are limitless, obviously. But I do this for me because it makes me feel good. It's my therapy. You know, I go to the gym. I feel better. You never regret going to the gym. Exactly. You exactly. You feel amazing. I, I regret when I, and I, I rarely skip the gym, you know, unless it's, it's something that, you know, a reason I just can't make it. I rarely skip the gym, but you know, when I don't get to work out, I feel it. But yes, as an entrepreneur, you know, obviously, you know, entrepreneurial, anyone, women, men, you know, they, it, it's, it's tough to fit in extra things. But like I said, once you make it a habit, so I do work, I go to the gym every day. You know, everyone's like, oh, well, you should take a rest day. Well, you know what a rest day can be sitting in the sauna. 
doesn't have to be not being at the gym. And, you know, right. I, you know, it, it doesn't mean, you know, it could be just doing cardio. a little or doing cardio or doing mm-hmm. yoga or doing something. So your off day doesn't have, you know, your off day can still be relaxing, but be in the gym, make it something so that you don't find reasons to not be there. Convenience. And you say, oh, well, I don't have time. Again, we make time for anything. There's, there, there, we're going to find a way to make time. I found a way to make time to literally go into the gym. I go to, and it doesn't have to be an expensive gym. It doesn't have to be, but something you like, you know, if you happen to like spin, then that's your thing. Then you go to your spin. If you happen to like boxing, if you have to like this, it doesn't have to be just going to, you know, a, a specific gym. I go to the YMCA. Everyone asks, oh, where do you work out? You're so this, that, and the other. I'm like, you don't have to go to a crazy gym to have a crazy body. <laughs> you can do this anywhere. You can do it at home if you want. Just find reasons to do something to move every single day. If, you, if you're the type of person where you need to schedule it, then freaking schedule it. Mm-hmm. You'll put it in, put it in your, 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 your schedule that 30 minutes, I'm going to do this. For me personally, the gym is on my way home. So I will always <laughs> drive to the gym before, you know, I go home and that's, you know, it, and if you can work out in the morning, people talk about, oh, well, there's not enough hours in the day. Trust me, there are. I mean, if, if you're a morning person, absolutely. You'll get used to a 5 a.m. workout. You'll be mm-hmm. surprised how many people are packed in the gym at 5 a.m. I used to to be one four forty five. We at the outside the door, so I find you know, and and I figure it out. Like if sometimes I can do a five or six a.m. workout, depending on when my first patient is. Not that I'm going to do it later on in the day. And sometimes I don't have enough time to do a full sixty minute workout, but I bet you I'm going to do thirty minutes some somewhere or somehow. You know, so it's just about at the end of the day, getting some type of physical activity in because your body will adjust and your body will get so used to it that you do this on a regular basis. And again, you feel it when you don't do it. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. We're back with Beyond the Fit. Being so busy and having our schedules and, you know, and, and, you know, people say, oh, well, you don't do this or you don't have this. You know, I'm a mother. I got two kids. Guess what? I still find reasons to work out. I run a business. I still find I have meetings. I have events. I have things that I have to do. I still find the time to work out on a regular basis. And you can get, if you have children, you can get your kids involved. You know, I'll go running and have my kids bike and, and we'll go do miles and I'm running and they're my, they're my little pace, pace Mm -hmm. keepers. So, you know, you can find ways to have people involved, but you want to be a role model. Right. And I'm glad you brought that up too, because I was going to say that next also, because anyone that's listening, whenever you hear doctor, people are already like, oh, my gosh. Okay. Doctor, we know you have assistance, you have people doing stuff. So I'm so happy that you brought that up. Like, Hey, yes, that is my career. Just like your career may be a store clerk at Walmart. Like we're both right. working eight, nine, 10 hour days on your busiest day. Like I know surgery days are probably your busier days. So like on a typical day when you have surgery, give us an example of what your day is, like how you structure that day. Like you said, pencil it in, which I've said before, if you listen to other episodes, <laughs> I've talked about that as well, put it on the calendar and then check it off every day. So give us like a little look inside of like one of your busiest days to show how fitness can still be part of that. It's all about knowing, you know, my, obviously my schedule, if I'm having surgery, my my surgery is typically going to start in we between eight and nine that morning. If and the thing is, I'm a single mom too, you know. So people don't, you know, they want to say, oh well, if you have support and stuff at home, I, I don't. I do. It's me. It's all me. It's so, right. you know. <laughs> that right there is a whole nother <laughs> yeah, issue. I mean, it's all me. You figure it out. And but I'll do a five a.m. or six a.m. workout if I know that I have a case, you know, because sometimes if a case is taxing or if a case goes longer or it gets delayed, then you may be. Physically Physically t- too tired to go do something later on to have a really good workout. So a lot of times I'll get, I may get a run in, I may get a workout in before surgery. If I know it's a short case or something that's going to go quick, then I know that I can work out after lunch. But I, I figure that out. You look at what your day is already scheduled, and I plan my workouts accordingly. And I do that. You know, it's not the day of the day. You know, it's, it's typically the day before. Like, okay, I know I can work out this time for this. So, but it, this is, I mean, it's just like you schedule anything else. It's a necessity. If you're scheduling a patient or a client or something else, then you're scheduling your workout exactly the same way. Treat it as a patient or a client, something that you're going to have to do, a meeting. Treat it just like the rest. You know, it is not a luxury. Don't treat right. it as, an, a, you know, a, a happy hour like I may or may not be able to get to this. No, it is part of your day. Once you make that 
part of your routine and your schedule, it will become so habitual that you don't even think about it. And then you, it's just part of your life. Right, right. And I actually, I said the same thing on one of my previous shows. I mentioned how when we have like children have all of these schedules when they're growing up, like everything is so structured in school and homework and bedtime and things like that. And then we become these adults and it's like, we're living in chaos. So yeah. just like we have those structured days for kids, you actually need more of that when you become an adult and you have all of these things flying at you. So right. I love that you talked about the schedule because I, I talked about that before too. So great point. Now, I had this show at the beginning in my first segment, I have this show basically pegged to kind of help anyone that's going into holiday season or if anyone listens to this close to New Year's, or even if they listen to it after New Year's, when you start getting all these resolutions and you're like, you know what? I need to get it together. Hold on. What is this show beyond the fit? Maybe I maybe I need to listen to this because she's doing something. So she's going to help me achieve these fitness goals. This might be a good, wait, a doctor and she's a hot doc? Hold on. Let me listen to this show. All of this, this time right now is either people are pigging out and they're like, screw it. It's the holidays. I'm just going to do this one last thing and I'll start in January. Or some people are saying, you know what? I might take it easy this holiday season because I really want to start achieving those goals in new, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year. How do you juggle eating healthy during the week? Because like we've talked about before, it's got to be a lifestyle. You cannot just eat healthy one meal. Like people post one salad, and then the next four days they're eating Popeye's chicken. And I'm like, you guys, you cannot achieve your fitness goals by having that. Like that has to be completely opposite. So like we said, with you being busy all of the time, how do you juggle eating healthy with your busy work life? Well, you know, I, one thing I'll say, just to kind of springboard off of what you just said, it, it's it's not something you can just start. It is something that you have to slowly transition into. So that's unfortunately the issue that most people face. They're like, okay, I'm gonna eat healthy. We're starting right now. And it doesn't work like that. Your body, you, you, it does not work like that. You have to, it's baby steps when it comes to trying to modify and change your, your eating habits. We don't really want to call it a diet because it's not a diet, it's eating habits. So just to change one little thing, you know, it makes a huge difference and start there. And when you've kind of mastered that, then move on to another thing. You can't just throw away, if, you, if you're a burger and you're doing all this and all of a sudden, okay, well, I'm gonna eat salads next week. It's not going to work because what you're doing is you're following, you know, falling into the fad diet phase and your body, it's going to, you're going to reject it. Then you're going to hate yourself for it. And then you're going to like, it doesn't work. I tried it. Salads don't work. I'm too hungry. You can't do that. My, my best advice for patients, again, is to make baby steps, slow transition, one small change. Just like they say, you know, it takes one, one, one step to, to, to complete a full marathon. Does it not? It's, and, and we always say that it's a marathon, not a sprint. So right. <laughs> during this time, and because we're in such a culture of immediacy, you know, we want instant gratification. We want instant changes. We want, if I'm going to do this now, then I, you know, that's why there's such a culture of flat tummy teas and digestive this, that, and the other, because we feel like, okay, well, I can eat whatever, but I'm going to take this, you know, this, this, you know, and ha laxative and I'm be good. I was going to say, cause pooping ain't going to give you abs. Okay. Yeah. That's just going to clean your colon. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole, that's a whole nother conversation. Right, right, right. Yes, <laughs> right, exactly. But definitely when it comes to just approaching this type of season, we all, you know, and it's, it's, we're only human. And the thing is, I mean, this is deep down. This is, this is what we do. We, we start to eat. We start to, you know, it, it's cuffing season. It's all that, you know, during this time, I don't care that it's warm outside, but this is biologically what we do. We want to start storing and eating. And then of course, you know, just with the, you know, uh, holidays, I mean, it's just, it's just natural. So my advice to anyone who wants to start making changes, don't do anything cold turkey. Start small. You know, I'm not saying, okay, quit all your bad eating, but, you know, make one less plate, put one less thing, a, try a little bit of a smaller portion, try, you know, or add you, you, just one small thing can lead to big changes. And that's my you best meal, advice. meal prep for work, or do you have like healthy choices at work? Like, how do you eat during the week when you're at that work? Gets, that gets tough because, especially if I'm in the if I'm in the hospital or if I'm in facilities, you obviously can't stop and eat. 
doesn't work like that. So a lot of times it's not as practical. It's a lot practical. It's, it's way more practical when it comes to, you know, meal plans and those type of things when you are sitting at a desk, you know, or when you can have it handy in your car. And I, I'm not saying that other doctors don't meal prep and, and they're able to do it. You you can find ways. Absolutely. But it's, it's a little bit more challenging. However, for me personally, I don't do a lot of meal prep. I mean, if I'm doing something specific, like a specific goal, like I did a, like an eight week challenge, you know, then of course I did a lot of, you know, I prepared everything, you know, was eating seven times a day, blah, 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 all that stuff. But on a regular basis, when I'm not doing something specific, I just eat what's normal for me. So it's not that I, ha I have some healthy choices here, you know, like I'll keep almonds here. I'll keep, you know, healthy snacks here. I mean, I always do, but, or I'll cook something, you know, I'll bring boiled eggs. I'll, you know, so I know, I know what I'll eat throughout the day. That'll keep me, you know, satiated. You know, I have peanut butter and you have a little peanut butter. I have protein powder here just in case. So there is stuff that I can still make healthy choices within my reach. Like don't store the unhealthy choices, you know, right. don't have the bag, don't have the bag of candy in your desk. Oh, like, it's so easy in offices. So, but, and, 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 you know, and it's not like and people always ask me, okay, well, what do you eat? What do you drink? You know, personally, I, you know, I, I don't crave a lot of sweets. I don't crave a lot of breads. It's not that I'll ever eat those things. I, my weakness would be, I love going out to eat. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love trying new restaurants. I love, you know, all that. So that would be outside of, a, 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 you know, an eating, you know, eating habits or healthy eating habits or whatnot. But for the most part, I'm, I'm eating pretty healthy, you know, always adding a, a vegetable, you know, and I teach that to my kids too. You, you got to have some raw fruit and veggies. You got to have this, you know. So, I mean, it, it helps when you have to be a role model to other people. That is a big motivator. You know, mm -hmm. even in being fit, you know, when you start taking on that type of responsibility, it almost pushes you to be a better person. So when right. other people are, wa and I'm not saying watching you as in, you know, like you're under the spotlight in, in a sense, but when you become, you know, motivation for other people, then you, it, it, it does better yourself. You know? Right. But that's you know, I've got to stay fine because I got people that are looking at me and I'm not, right. not, I'm not, I'm heels and buying you hot. Come on now. Right, they gonna be like, well, she's gonna have to retire that title. She's gonna be the doc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just Doctor Barrow. She ain't nothing else. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean that exactly. But that and, and that's a huge point. What you said, yes, because it goes back to 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 sense of self and and the whole body positivity and everything else you know what makes you feel good and if you want to look good and you want to be sexy in your bikini if you want to be sexy naked then those are motivators too you know some people are like look i just want to look great naked well hey that's what i'm saying when i take this off i want to be like hey, hey. sex only holds in so much you know when you know, you know, with the heart <laughs> right when that spandex come off shoot right uh -huh. over so y'all better be careful now. Exactly. Right. Long. <laughs> and I love it. And I love it because like I said before, a lot of our listeners are middle age between 25, 30 plus all yeah. the way up until death. Like, so we love have it. all of these women. So I love whenever we can have these conversations with men and women and talk about, Hey, this is what we're doing at midlife. Like it is obtainable. It is obtainable to have children. It is obtainable to still be fit. I've never had any type of plastic surgery where I'm, I've never gotten lipo or anything like that. Like this is dedication. This is how hard it is. And that's what actually Dr. Barrow and I were talking about before, just how we are trying to show, how we are trying to show being natural and and giving fitness a, the platform of being strong and still showing that it's it's something that you have to work for. This isn't fat getting re, you know, put in other places, which if that's what you want to do, knock yourself out. But my whole beyond the fit is I want us to talk about realistic, natural, being fit and how hard it is. And the fact that you see two women right now that are midlife career women and still making ourselves a priority and still going through all of this stuff. Inspiration, motivation, whoever's listening, you can do it. Make today your day one. Can I, can I add to that? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Uh, yeah, in the age, and I think that's, you bring up such a valid point. It's so difficult in the age of social media and what's trending and body types right now, you know, and, and again, just like you said, 
you know, I don't knock anybody for wanting to do something for the right reasons. And, you know, if you want to enhance your body, this, that, and the other, but I don't want false advertisement at the same time, exactly. you know, and, and, and that's fine. You know, I'm not saying that you have to tell anyone if you got surgery, but what I mean is that don't go into the gym after you have surgery and say, <laughs> oh my gosh. God. And I just like, I said, really, that's not how that works. And I'm like, right. no, you cannot. It's, it's very difficult to, you know, I work out every single day of my life for the last 20 some odd years, you know, 40 years, whatever. But, you know, it doesn't work like that. And it's okay if you want that body type. All body types are beautiful, you know, right. um, but we want to promote health at the same time. I'm, I'm an advocate and ambassador for American Heart Association, especially, you know, in an African-American community where heart disease is is killing us. And it's it's almost it's due to, you know, just kind of systemic lifestyle. And and that that's what also where I want to help make a change just in our community. But, uh, you know, again, the social media and the, and the BBLs and everything else, I mean, you know, a lot of that, a lot of people see that and they're saying, well, if I want that body, then I can't, you know, going to the gym is not going to do anything. You know, I need to need this body type. That's the problem, I think. And that becomes the issue. And that becomes a discouragement for a lot of women who are wanting to start something. They see that, they see the social media, they see how long it's going to take in the gym. Right. They're like, forget this. <laughs> Dude, I think, I think that too. I'm like, oh my God, I, I can't take it. That's why when I post the picture, I'm like, okay, stomach acting right today. Okay. Well, like, and that's why I went, oh yes, you made that point. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So yes, you know, hormones and being a woman and everything else, we're going to have blood. My stomach doesn't always look all six packy, you know, come on. That's just, it, it doesn't, you know, I mean, there's days when you're bloated, days when you didn't, you know, whatever you ate shows up the next day. That's reality in real bodies. Obviously, what we see on social media is a glimpse. You know, I mean, no, we're not going to always post our most bloated self. I mean, we're not. We're not. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't happen to me. Absolutely. My stomach is poked out if I'm going to have a big burger. I mean, that's just reality. But the thing is, bodies, our bodies change. Our bodies, you know, are constantly changing on a daily basis. Even in the, in the beginning of the morning to the end of the day, your body can look different. And that Correct. is perfectly okay with that. You know, I think that we just have this unrealistic view that we have to look this certain way and it's going to stay that certain way. And we're, there's so much comparison to what we see on TV and social media, and, you know, and I think that that is become, you know, a deterrent to living a consistently healthy fit lifestyle because you're not seeing these res the results immediately, you know, or if they seeing me, I'm like, you know, I do this every day. This is not a once a day thing. And it's not just working out. There's, there's other factors to it. You know, there's so many other things. So, you know, I, I try to have those conversations with people not to focus on the end of the tunnel. You know, it's, it's personal little victories each day. You really got to give yourself much more credit. And I think that's what we don't do. We don't give ourselves a little bit like, hey, you know what? I made it to the gym today. Right. Sometimes that's, that's I, sat on the, I sat on the bike. I did five minutes and I had to go. But, hey, I did it. And and I think that, you know, we don't give ourselves credit for the small victories that, again, will lead to something bigger. And I think that it, it, right. it, we realize that baby steps, give yourself credit for the baby steps. Right. Making yourself a priority. You brought up a great topic about when you were talking about the American Heart Association and things like that and, and how you have a passion for that. And me being a nurse, I'm also in the medical side, speaking from that aspect as well. And I just think that that's a key point that we also want to kind of like reiterate to our listeners is that having surgery and having these unhealthy lifestyles or things like that are not working out. That's actually bad for your heart. African-American women are at a very high risk of heart disease. And, you know, that's why there's this, all these campaigns for the American Heart Association, like Dr. Barrow is a part of, because having surgery, yes, you may have a body, but you are not getting the benefits of having a healthy lifestyle. You right. are not getting the cardiovascular health from working out. You're not pushing yourself. That's just kind of like, you know, we're just giving you a disclaimer mm -hmm. that yes, we're not advocating for plastic surgery surgery or whatever, because we also are in this, this fitness lifestyle. And I know like when I go to see my oncologist every year, that's one of the things that he always talks about. Like I had a good outcome with my whole cancer story because I was in shape. I was fit. 
And I've talked about the same thing when everyone's talking about all of these predisposing factors for COVID or all of these other things, they're saying this. And that's also why we're pushing the healthy lifestyle, because not only do you look good, but internally it's doing things that are supposed to be happening (laughs) for your body. Right. No, so, yeah. Getting the surgeries in it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and the people don't realize these bodies, you know, they're, they require maintenance when right. they're doing this plastic surgeries. And, you know, and if you're, you know, if, if you didn't have the foundation of a fit, you know, or, or uh, you know, a healthy, you know, lifestyle prior to it's, it's, you know, you, it's hard to maintain that right. body. You're just going to continue to get surgery. You're going to continue to get the lipo, continue to do this. It's not a fix. Right. So, you know, have the healthy foundation, you know, prior, you know, prior to, and, and you heal faster. And there's so many, there's, I mean, the, 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 again, the benefits of just having a fit lifestyle, a heart healthy lifestyle are just, are limitless. As I said before, you know, there's no downside to it. Right. Good information. I have just some questions about Dr. Barrow. When you are short on time, what is your favorite workout to do? Um, you know, it totally Besides run. <laughs> well, actually, you know, when I'm short on time, it's not running because my oh, running, I'm, I'm, I love long distance running. Because yes. I, she, runs, she runs, she runs like 8,000 miles when she runs. Like she, she literally runs through the whole, she'll post on her story. And I'm like, what the heck? Like she's run, like she has ran through all of Let me run this half marathon real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So okay, not running. No, um, the running won't be it. That's the thing. I, you know, because I, because uh, I, I get so caught up in the runs. I it's it's like I get lost in the run, and I love it. And it's like it'll be something in the gym. It'll it typically will be at least a warm up. You know, something on elliptical treadmill. You know, a lot of times it's gonna be it's gonna be a um an open kinetic chain type of exercise where you're just on the machines doing something, basically a circuit. You know, that's what I'll do if I've got like 30 minutes, you know, which has happened before. Like I got to work something out. Let me just get a quick sweat. It will be a five or 10 minute just warm up. It'll hit a circuit, you know, depending on if I'm doing quick legs or arms. A lot of times what I'll tell people is that always incorporate a leg uh, exercise because those are your biggest muscles. We exert the most energy. You're going to get more cardiovascular workout. It may not necessarily be a fat burning workout because we all know that if you want to burn fat, you've got to maintain a certain target heart rate past 30 minutes, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) But yeah, so, but if you want a cardiovascular workout, which is easier to get than a fat burning, then then you just hop on and just do some quick resistance, do a quick circuit, and then you're out. that's something that me personally that I will do if I know that I don't have enough time. So at least you did some resistance, you got that heart rate up, you know, you broke a little bit of a sweat and you feel that you've accomplished something, you know, right. when I have more time that obviously it's going to be, you know, more uh, uh, weight training. Right. That's right. What it, that's okay. it. it just takes longer. You know, you're, you're changing, you're changing out your plates. You're doing all this different stuff. Right. Um, right. Her go-to for if, she has to make moves today, but she's going to get it done. Is she's going to pick a body part, probably legs, and she's going to hit a circuit, do those machines, rotate it, whatever. So get you a good 30 minutes. So no excuses. Excuses. Next question is a similar topic. You're on the run. You have a busy day. You're on your way out for lunch You for an hour. What's your go-to for food? What are you about to eat? Hmm. It's funny because I'm I'm usually not out for an hour. <laughs> I work through. I'm like I work through lunches. I do work through lunches, so I'm snacking in between. So that's the thing. Like, okay. Well, say, I will, okay. You know, no, no. You're actually you actually get an hour break today, and I you're think- gonna go out and get lunch. Where are you going, and what are you going to eat? If I'm actually going somewhere, and I got to get back to the office. If, if I have to get back to the office and I can't sit in a nice restaurant. Yeah, and like, oh, no, this is, this is the bad day. You just got to yeah. get it. Okay. It's, it's probably going to, it's, it's going to be grabbing a salad with protein, you know, or sushi. Cause you can always pick up. I mean, if you like sushi, which I love sushi or sashimi, grab it quick from HEB. They have amazing right. stuff, you know, Kroger, whatever. They have prepared sushi. It's quick. You get your protein. You get, you know, a little bit of the carb that you need. That's awesome. If you're go to, you know, get some salad, some turkey or something in it. So that's what I'll get if I'm doing like a quick lunch and I got to make it back. So not too heavy. You right. know, you know, you got to be functional, you know, the rest of the day. Can't, take a nap. Get the itis, can't get the itis and go to I sleep. Can take a nap in one of the exam rooms. <laughs> well, where, where, 
she had carbs for lunch, so she's out. I know. <laughs> yes, you try to have your light, your 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 protein at lunch. If I'm bringing something, a lot of times it'll be, it's not always going to be leftovers from home, but from your dinner, you know, it's going to be like, you can do uh, they, jasmine rice with a boiled egg with a green. And these are some things I picked up when I did my challenge, like, a, you know, and that's another thing, you know, I tell patients all the time, you know, there, there are some fitness instructors out there who sometimes promote doing short challenges and what, and you pick up things along the way. That, that's another deterrent that people won't go into the gym because they just don't know what to do. And they don't want to go, they don't want to get a trainer. And I always say, Hey, you can get a trainer for like three sessions and then ask them to show you everything. Mm -hmm. And you take notes, you know, you don't always have to purchase, you know, a thousand sessions from a trainer so that you, you know, if that's what you want to do, excellent, go for it. But not everybody can do that. So I say, hey, or you can just, you know, ask a sign up for one session and then ask them everything and show and so that you know how to use the machines, you know how to do stuff properly. And that can absolutely you know, motivate you a little bit more because you have knowledge to go into the gym. Some people want to sign up for classes. I'm not a group person. You know, I'm not a group, uh, uh, you know, yeah. exercise person. I like to work out alone. You know, I got the headphones on. Don't talk to me. I'm in my zone. If my, right. if my music cuts off. I don't take the headphones out. I pretend right. I got the music. On. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't hear I'm you. I'm like, what? What? Can't hear you. <laughs> But I mean, and that's me personally, but, but I'm a veteran of the gym, so I know things to do, but I don't know, you know, there's all, you can always learn something new. I've even, you know, as much as I've worked out and as much as I know, you always learn new things, you know, it's always evolving. Like I said, that goes back to just, what am I supposed to eat? What can you eat? That's another thing where people kind of get deterred with living because all they think the first thing they go to is, oh, salad. And I'm right. like, oh, no, you don't have the salad is not always it. Right. And I tell them, don't eat salad. Like anytime I'm training someone or I start or I do a meal plan for someone, the first thing I say is stay away from salads yeah. because you're not able to count your macros. You're not able right. to see exactly what you're, you're putting this big old thing and piling, piling. A lot of times it's an unhealthy salad. Yes. No, I need you to get some portion containers right. so you can look at how much you're eating and measure it out. So yeah, great point yeah. about that. And yeah. If someone's starting out, you can't do that. I mean, if if you know yourself and you know what you're putting in, I mean, that's a totally different story. And, yeah. and, and, but and you can't know, measure it out. Right. You got to eat based on what you're, the type of workout you're doing. You got to feed your muscle. I mean, you already know this, you, you train, so you get it. But I think that those are the things that is confusing to some people who are just wanting to start out. And just like you said, the first thing they think about is, well, I got to eat rabbit food. Right. <laughs> right. <rabbit> food. <laughs> you got to feed your body. <laughs> right. And that's, yeah. And that was, I mean, that was the whole point of, of what, what we're talking about in, in this segment is about, like, like I said, people who are trying to say, I don't want to gain weight during holidays, or you know what, maybe I need to start, or how do I start? So I think these are great points for anyone that's like looking and saying, oh, okay, well, maybe I can, or maybe that's doable. Like we're giving you a lot of advice and tools to implement and so that you can achieve whatever it is that you're trying to do, whatever your goal is, whether it's losing weight, whether it's maintaining, or whether it's just to have a healthier lifestyle. We've talked about all of these different angles to help you. Last question, Dr. Barrow, is about, like we said, you're a podiatrist. And so we want to talk about like what you're doing in your practice. So I know that you are always posting things on your business page and stuff about athletes that are coming to you and things like that. So what is it that you specialize in and what is it that you like doing for your patients and things like that? Because I know you do have a lot of athletes that come to you. So what is like the most common things? What are you doing? What, wh how do you stay abreast? Like what, what are you, how you, you know, differentiate yourself and your practice from other people with your treatments? Oh, what a perfect segue. Because I was just about to say, can I talk about injuries? Yes, <laughs> and, see, go well, for it. That's why I wanted to go back because injuries is one of the number one reasons people don't go to the gym, you know, and injuries and being uh, overweight. And it seems like, it seems like that's, you know, obviously counterintuitive. Like you're not going to go to the gym because you're overweight. And the reason being because number one, they just feel uncomfortable. They going to the gym, they don't know what to do, you know? And so, uh, or if you're overweight and that's what's causing, you know, any joint pain, that's the first thing a lot of, they'll hear from a lot of doctors. You know, I had one patient almost break down in tears when, you know, she's just like, she's like, look, you know, I know I'm overweight. I don't need a doctor to tell me I'm overweight. 
And then what they're what they're going to do is they're going to say, oh, you're overweight. You need to lose weight. You need to go work out. And she's like, you think I'm not intelligent enough to figure that out. And the problem is, if you're having pain, it is hard to work out because it hurts to work out. So it becomes like this, you know, never ending cycle. So, you know, it's like, let's address why you're hurting. Let's let's focus on that so that you can work out pain free. But I will say that that is one of the reasons that people aren't in the gym because something hurts. And they don't know what else they can work out to avoid exacerbating that injury or that that painful area. But as far as my practice, um, obviously, you know, I specialize. My scope or, or specialty is in foot and ankle, just like you have a hand surgeon. You have, you know, someone who specializes in knees and hips. I specialize in foot and ankle surgery. And the reason being, again, because of my sports medicine background, you have a lot of foot and ankle injuries in sports. Uh, so it's kind of a natural progression for me. Now, granted, I see patients of all ages from children all the way up to, you know, the geriatric prop population. And, and, and yes, I see, and, and, and they're athletic. I see athletic children and geriatrics, you know, the most common, I would say the most common foot and ankle, you know, complaint or injury would be, you know, plantar fasciitis, which is heel pain. That's one of the most common. Other than that, you know, you might have an Achilles tendonitis. Now these are typically chronic issues with acute pain, which means that they've patients have had these for years, but every once in a while it gets acutely painful. So that in and of itself can keep you out the gym because it hurts to stand on, it hurts to walk, hurts to when you get up in the morning, you put those those feet down, it hurts to do a lot of things. My job is to basically, you know, get patients back to being pain free so they can get back to being fit and running and everything else. I do see a lot of runners who suffer from chronic injuries. And one thing I do like to point out, even though my my scope is foot and ankle, I evaluate head to toe because a lot of times the the problem may present in the foot and ankle or the lower extremity, but it may be originating from somewhere else. They may have weak glutes. They may have tight hips. They may have, you know, um, uh, you know, back pain. They may have, you know, a limb length discrepancy. So there's so many other things that can attribute to, uh, you know, what's going on, you know, down the road or at the bottom of the tree, we will say. So I do evaluate head to toe. Now, as far as treatment goes, I mean, there's, there's, you know, I am a little bit more unconventional when it comes to treating my patients. I mean, typically patients would be expecting rest, giving some pills and hope for the best. <laughs> rest right. for the best, you know, right. and, you know, and when you come, when you have chronic injuries, rest is not really the way to go. If it's acute injury and something just happened, absolutely rest it. The body will heal it. That's the, the body has the ability to heal. So that's the whole idea of regenerative medicine. It's tapping into the body's ability to heal itself. All our bodies have the ability to do it. But as we mature later in life, those that that ability is is a little bit slower acting and there's less of those healing cells are floating around to do it. So when we do certain things as uh, stem cell treatment, that is basically concentrating that ability and putting it right in the area. So we are converting a chronic inflammatory situation into an acute one and then the body starts to heal. And that's the whole idea behind regenerative medicine and stem cell therapy. It's not just in orthopedics, obviously. They're doing stem cell therapy in heart disease. They're doing, you know, for patients who had an MI, a heart attack, you know, myocardial infarction, they're injecting stem cell in the, you know, pericardial tissue and it's, it's doing wonders, you know. So stem cell has a lot about, it is the future of medicine. That is one of the reasons why I promote it so much, you know, and I open my patients' mindsets to it because our bodies have the ability to do it. And then, you, you know, you're not putting steroids into the body, you know, anti harm, you know, harmful other medications. And I'm not saying that I don't use that, those other therapies, but I give patients options and you, 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 that's the whole idea. You want every option when it comes to your health and you, you're getting better. And I provide all of those options and give them the probabilities and the possibilities and, you know, let patients make that decision. Because a lot of times patients don't get the chance to make the decision in their health. When they see a doctor, they're like, okay, well, here's this medication. This is all you're going to get. You know, they don't know their choices and you do have choices in your health care. And so that's one of the reasons I really like to promote regenerative medicine. And the best things about stem cell is that there is no downtime. You know, I'm not telling you go sit out six weeks. It is it is kind of one of those active therapies where you can continue to 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 work out, continue to move because blood is life. You get blood flow to the area. That's the whole point. That's what we want. You know, getting blood flow to the area and healing something that's been chronically inflamed for so long. So that's why I get so excited about it. I could talk about it for days. I'd bore everyone. <laughs>
You can always see my stem cell surgeries on, on my page if you want to check it out. <laughs> right. Well, and that's what I was going to say too. That's what I was going to say too. Tell the listeners how they can reach you, like your contact information. I always put in the notes all of the contact information, but sometimes people don't read the notes or they don't know the notes are there or that, you know, like whatever, they just think it's a podcast. So they listen and they don't know that they have like a little bio at the bottom. So if you could go ahead and give them all of your contact information, how to get in touch with you, how to follow you on social media, as well as make sure spell it out for anyone that, you know, they are driving or whatever, just give them, you know, some people auditory, some people are visual. So give them all of your contact information, anything you want them to know, how they can reach you and spell any abnormal words. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So obviously, you know, I'm an owner of Soul Aesthetic. If you want to find my business, S-O-L-E, Soul, as in the bottom of your foot, Aesthetic, as in beauty, A-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C. So that's Soul Aesthetic. Office is in Bel Air, Texas. So that's just a little area outside of Houston or within the middle of Houston, if you will. 5959 West Loop South, Suite 130. So that's how you can find me physically. Please follow me on social media because I I do a lot of, I talk about a lot of surgeries. I talk about, you know, a lot of therapies um, and do a lot of uh, instructional videos as well. And my social on Instagram, I'm Soul Aesthetic TX. So again, that's S-O-L-E-A-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C-T-X or the Hot Dock and Heels. So you can always find me as the Hot Dock and Heels. You can also follow me, you know, I have a YouTube channel, same thing, you know, it's all soul aesthetic, or, you know, you can Google Dr. Vanessa Barrow, visit my website, again, www.soulaestheticTX.com. I think that's pretty much it, you know. Okay. <laughs> Give me a ring, you know, 713-666-9934. But DM me, I mean, you know, patients, DM me all the time. And, you know, I, I'm happy to answer any quick little questions. And if I, if I think you need to come in so I can take a look at you, then, you know, I'll let you know. But I respond to my social media, you know, all the time. So you can find me on Facebook as well. So. Okay, good, 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 good. And the reason why I was saying give the information to you guys, because like I said, Dr. Barrow doesn't just post about feet. Okay, so don't say, oh, my God, all right, feet. eh." Like she does, she posts lots of stuff. She posts all of these things, these events that she's doing, all of this stuff in the community. Like she's out here in the community, too. Like she's helping. She's doing stuff for heart health. Like there's all of these things that she's doing. She posts tons of workouts. She's always posting whenever, you know, workouts that she's doing, different challenges, things like that. So she's very, very motivational for anyone that's trying to start. That's why. I try to post stuff on my page as well, like where I am fitness wise, but then also maintaining also workouts to try challenges, things like that. Because, you know, we know what it's like to start and we know what it's like to see people not using proper form. So we're using these platforms to one, maybe give you ideas for food choices, give you ideas for fitness choices, things like that. All that information will be in the notes, so don't fret if you didn't copy it down the 82 times that she said it. <laughs> at, least she, at least she has a theme, so very, very simple to fo- find her. Thank you so much, Dr. Barrow, for being a guest today on our show. We appreciate all of the information that you've given us. And so, (laughs) and so just to close out, you guys know that I always talk about a life check and I always bring that up because one, that's part of my book. And I do that to make sure that you have retained and reiterate the information that we shared with you guys today. So I just wanted to just do a quick life check. I know it's a good show, lots of information, but I want to make sure that you guys understand that any day that you choose to start is your day one. All it takes is for you to decide that you deserve to be the best version of yourself inside and out. We want to make sure 
that as we're aging, as we're getting older, don't lose focus of how important you are. Don't lose focus of how important it is for you to be the healthiest version of yourself. It's really easy to get caught up. That's why Dr. Barrow is such a great guest today because she talked about being a career person and still being fit and being a mom and doing all of these things. And I just want you guys to be motivated. I hope you take from this show and say, you know what? I That was a good topic. Oh, you know what? They gave me a lot of tangible information that I can input in my life or that really related to me. Or maybe I'm going to use this holiday season to really reflect on, on what I want to do. Maybe I need to go into the next year doing what I want to do. You don't have to wait until January 1st to choose you. Whatever day you decide to make yourself a priority is your day one. So start today, start whenever you have the tools that you need. And we just want to make sure that you continue going beyond the fit.